Hi guys, this is David Hodgen uh, filling in again. Jeff and Tammy are going on vacation this week, so I'm filling in. Um, pardon my funny little setup here. I'm not um, quite as techy as Jeff, and so you just have to put up with me for a couple weeks, and then Jeff will be back. Uh, we're going to continue our series on the armor of God. We are nearing the end. I want you to take your Bible today and turn to Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 17. Here we read, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Our focus today is on the sword of the Spirit. The simplest thing to point out here is that the sword is the only part of the armor that is used for the offense. Uh, everything else is for defense. The sword is the only part of the uniform that is not designed to protect the wearer. And based on this information, it's only natural to say that, you know, if it's not for protection and it's a uh, military garb, it, if it's not for protection, it's for assaulting. And so when we look at the Bible, you know, it's easy to look at a passage like this and kind of draw a conclusion that the purpose of the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the purpose of that is to inflict pain on the enemy. And we can say, well, the enemy is Satan. But sometimes, you know, the enemy seems to be uh, non-believers. And sometimes the enemy can even be other believers, people in your own church, when you want to use your Bible, like stab them and make a good point. But let me assure you, nothing could be farther from the truth. The sword of the Spirit is not for destroying. It's for building up. Let's um, proceed. Join with me in prayer. Father, we just want to take a moment and we want to open our hearts and minds. Maybe, Lord, today we'll learn something new. Maybe we'll just get some clarification, maybe some encouragement for the week, um, some answers to something that's been going on. But Father, we just pray that you would just be with us as we try and listen to you this morning and learn from your word. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a quick look at the context and the topic that leads up to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17. We always want to look at the context of a passage so that we um, take it as, take the book as a whole, rather than looking at it as a series of, of sonnets or snippets that are put together. Um, the, the Bible is the, the whole book, and when we're looking at a book of Ephesians, a letter to the church in Ephesus, we're not seeing a bunch of bullet points that the Holy Spirit led the apostle to make. What we're looking at is a narrative from beginning to end. And so we don't want to just jump in to chapter 6. We need to understand what's all around it. If we go back as far as, say, chapter 4, in chapter 4 we're going to read about unity and oneness of the body of Christ. Then, as chapter 2 begins, or excuse me, chapter 5 begins, and we get to verse number 2, it's going to challenge us to walk in love. So chapter 4, unity and oneness. Chapter 5 begins, walk in love. Then the Bible in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 22, there we, we read that husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. See, in today's text, we read about the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and here in chapter 5 and verse 26, we see the word being used to wash and clean, not cut and destroy. As chapter 6 begins, we are reading about 
children, obeying their parents, bond servants, obeying their masters. And then the scripture steps right into Ephesians 6, um, 10 and 11, which reads, Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. From this context of love and cooperation, we step right into, excuse me, yeah, from the context of love and cooperation, we step right into the armor of God and the schemes of the devil. What are the schemes of the devil? Well, you know what? We just covered the schemes of the devil. You see, the devil's schemes are to put a wedge between husbands and wives, children and parents, uh, uh, servants and masters, between Christ and his church. The devil's schemes are to destroy homes, families, businesses, and churches. That's the devil's schemes. He wants to divide us from each other and ultimately from God. I want you to see from this passage that the sword of the Spirit is introduced as the single offensive weapon to defeat the devil's work in your home, family, business, and church. But what I want you to see is that the context of this passage teaches us that the sword of the Spirit does not function through anger, through wrath, through division, but through the love of God, which is our unity with him. As much as we are tempted to pick up on the imagery and the illustration of armor and the sword being tools of a bloody battle, we need to keep it in the context of what the Bible teaches and the context here is love and cooperation. We also cannot miss that the sword is not presented as a sharp metal object, but as the word of God. Now, some might say, well, the word of God is Jesus. And well, sometimes it is, but not here. Here in this passage, when it speaks of the word of God, it's speaking of the Holy Scriptures. So the Bible's imagery of the armor of God concludes with taking up the Bible for the purpose of creating an environment of love and cooperation for the purpose of defeating the devil's schemes. Not for defeating the devil himself, that's God's business, and that's covered in the book of Revelation. But we take it up so that we, um, so since we can't destroy the devil himself, what we do see is that we can destroy his schemes and his work in our lives. So, how are you doing with destroying the devil's schemes in your life. Now, you know, the question is, how, how are you doing in your spiritual life? How, how are things going in your family, in your church, in your business? Is the devil, are his schemes crumbling or are they building? And so that's the question. How are you doing with destroying the schemes of the devil right here in 2022. So I want to give you a personal illustration about using a topic where I believe that we've all taken sides and most of us have taken our position based on information apart from the word of God. This topic is one we're all tired of hearing about because it's about, you know, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this is a part of my journey through it. I just want to share it with you so that you could begin to see how the 
that the Word of God can be used to help us sort through these contemporary issues. You know, back on March 23rd, 2020, Washington State Governor Jay Inslee issued the Stay Home, Stay Healthy order. That night, I posted on Facebook that we need to keep in mind that we are voluntarily submitting to the Stay Home order because it is a violation of our rights under the First Amendment. The First Amendment gives us the right to peacefully assemble. What I want you to see is that from day number one, I was in resistance to the whole thing. And in resistance to kind of almost everything as, as we went forward for the next few weeks. But bear with me. We know um, where things went from that first day. You know, we're told don't wear a mask. Then we're told you need to wear a mask. And then we're told, well, you need to wear two masks. And then they had us wearing three masks for a while. And they told us, you know, that bandanas were fine. Those are those will work great. And then they said, no, they won't work at all. And then they went back and said, well, you, you wearing something's better than nothing. So put it on. And somewhere in there, all the toilet paper in the stores sold out. And, you know, next they said, well, we couldn't go to church. And then um, they said, well, you can go to church if you all stay outside. And today, while this Omicron variant is still filling the hospitals, we're back inside church. So, it, you know, the whole thing just really wanted to make, it wanted to make me scream. And I, I felt myself being pulled back and forth to the different sides of the issue. And certainly there were sides to the issue. Now, please don't get lost in this illustration of the point, because I don't want your mind starting to think about you know, the pandemic and, and all that that's going on. I want you to keep on track. The, 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 there's, an, there's the illustration, but there's also the point. The point is about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So keep your mind on target. Don't get lost in the illustration. Um, for those of us that follow Jesus Christ, especially those who have been listening to Pastor Jeff's series on the armor of God, we know that the problem that we see is never the problem. The real problem is always the problem that's behind the problem. That's where the spiritual battle takes place. As a Christian who wants to be fully clothed by the armor of God, I, probably like you, started to pray and ask the Lord, you know, I was like, Lord, this, this pandemic thing, it's, it's driving me nuts. Um, I feel frustrated. I, I feel angry. I'm upset. I feel violated. And in time, God spoke to my heart in that way that he, that he does speak, I believe, to all of us. But he, he speaks in that way that kind of slides the first problem out of the way so that, that so that the problem behind the problem can be exposed. And, you know, when I was praying, and I was just so frustrated, and the Lord really just spoke to my heart, and what he said was, really, David? After all these years, are you still rebellious? It's like, oh. Then I had to face my problem that was behind the problem. Because apart from what you or anybody else or even the whole world is dealing with, I had to deal with my rebellious attitude. An attitude that fit right in to the devil's schemes. So with that, I had to change my ways because now I understood the problem that was behind the problem. Can you relate to any of that? As I came to terms with things about wearing masks, about not being rebellious, I was just coming to terms with all that. And then it comes on the news that, well, you got to get vaccinated. Yeah, I thought my brain was just going to blow up. I... I just 
I had just come to terms with them messing with the outside of my body. And now here they are wanting to mess with the inside of my body. So it's Pfizer, Moderna, J and J. And it's like, what, um, you know, would I get it? Wouldn't I get it? I investigated, I researched, I listened to both sides. And not to say that God said to me, but to say as someone who reads the Bible, I began to see the problem behind the problem for me. I'm not imposing anything on you. You've got your own journey and I've got mine. I'm just talking about my journey. But I had to ask myself when it came to this vaccine, what are you afraid of? Am I afraid of losing my rights? Am I afraid of getting the vaccine? Am I afraid of not getting the vaccine? Am I afraid of offending my non-vaccine friends? Am I afraid of offending my pro-vaccine friends? Where's the fear based? What? Because it was definitely fear. Fear where the country was going, fear of this, fear of that, but fear, fear, fear on every turn. And the Bible teaches us not to fear. So I knew that this fear was just another scheme of the devil. So then you got to bring out the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to battle the schemes of the devil, because that's what this passage is teaching us about. See, it's not about my, in, excuse me, it's not my intention to advise you about anything. I'm just sharing my journey with you to share how I used the sword of the spirit to help me stand against the schemes of the devil in my life. You can judge me right or wrong, but to the best of my ability, I avoided taking advice from science, from doctors, from the president, from the governor, from my neighbors, from my friends, from my family, which, by the way, does not make you very popular with any of them. To the best of my ability, I sought God to show me my problem behind the problem. And I wanted him to expose the spiritual battle. See, the spiritual battle where wearing the armor of God actually helps us. Where we can take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and use the word of God because it is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. See, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We have gotten, or excuse me, we have not gotten spiritually dressed, and we are not ready to face the schemes of the devil until we have taken up the sword of the Spirit the sword that loves more than it hates, the sword that builds more than it destroys, the sword that makes us more like God wants us to be and less like others think we should be. So why do I need to do this? Why do you need to do this? Why do we need to do it? You know, why do we need to stand against the schemes of the devil. And you might say, 
There's all kinds of people out there in this world who never give a thought to the devil or his schemes. And they seem to live just fine. Well, do they? I mean, will it all work out for them? The Bible teaches us that 2,000 years ago, the God who spoke and created this world put into action the plan to save this world. I suppose there are many ways he could have saved the world, but he chose one way. God became a man. A man who could walk in this room. He could sit in one of these chairs. And he could blend in to the point that we would just think, oh, this is another guy. It's a guest. Somebody's here visiting. It's, we would have no idea that he was God. That man, of course, is Jesus. And he didn't just sit in the chairs. He didn't just take up a spot in the back of the church and sit there. Now, he got up, he took the word of God, and he spoke it. And he stood against the schemes of the devil. And he stood against the schemes of the church and the politics. He stood against his family and his friends. And he was not very popular. As a matter of fact, with some of the people, he was so unpopular. They took him and they crucified him. And when he was dead, they placed him in a tomb. Then, according to the scriptures, he did what only God could do. He rose from the dead. Those who accept Jesus Christ as the sacrifice for sin and call upon his name, they will have their life, excuse me, they will have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and thereby receive eternal life. Those who don't will be cast into the lake of fire. So, if we are going to believe what the Bible teaches about heaven, we also need to believe what it teaches about hell. Now, you've heard it said, well, a loving God will never send anyone to hell or something to that effect. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible is the only offense weapon that we have to tell the people God offers forgiveness and eternal life through Christ alone. And it's based on that that I would ask, have you received him? Because does it make a difference if we battle the schemes of the devil? Well, the first place we need to start is to battle him in our own hearts. Now, I've been a Christian for a long time, and I've just shared with you a battle that I went through over the last couple of years. Battles don't stop. As long as we're in this body, on this earth, it's one battle after another. That doesn't mean we stop. It means we are supposed to get better and better at using the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, to apply it to the problems of this life. That we wouldn't let our emotions take over but that we would let the Word of God take over. We're not fully dressed until we have believed the Bible, for it destroys the schemes of the devil in our minds, in our families, our church, and in our world. Start by letting them clean up our own lives. might just be surprised at how much everything else
just kind of falls into place. I was so upset about the pandemic and all the stuff that was going on until I dealt with my rebellious nature and oddly I'm not upset about it anymore. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love. I just ask, Lord, that you touch each and every hearer, each and every listener, that they would know that the sword of the Spirit is not for attacking others, but for using your word to love one another. Help us, Lord, to love well, because we're in a place where it's real hard. Thank you for Jesus and the hope that we have in him. It's in his name we pray. Amen.